First, though, we couldn't have Sally Dinover here without talking about Corrie, of course, could we? Massive fan, as you know. Big, big week this week. Yes, super soap week super this week, so everyone's week. got to tune in. Yeah. Um, and so, Tim, your husband... Ooh, it's all... It's what's all getting like? a bit... You don't know, you see, you're a bit oblivious to this, but we know what's been going on. Have a little look at what's going to happen tonight. Oh. Tim would have loved it. No pressure, but your night in, I'd better be worth it. They didn't have a night in. Tim was with you. With me? No. In the VIP box. Stop covering for him, Kevin. It's pathetic. I don't understand. I invited Tim, but he said he had to stay... He'd rather stay in with you. Kirk had the ticket. Money. So where was Tim? Uh, uh, sorry, Mr. Reed, I've got a family emergency. Oh, is everything OK? Tim. Didn't come home last night. Um, is, is there anything I can do? Elaine, where are you? Tim, it's Kev. Give us a ring when you get this message. Oh! oh. He's Where's good. Tim? Oh, we yes. don't know. Is he in the audience? We don't know. <laughs> we don't know, but Stephen knows where he is, I'm sure of it. Yeah, Sally can say nothing, does. of course, look. <laughs> probably <laughs> does. I mean, on that clip, I look like I've been in a wind tunnel. <laughs> 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 um, yeah, no, oh, yeah, Sally does, has no idea where he's gone. He's nipped out for something and he's not come back and she's cross with him. But you know what he's like, he could be anywhere. And Todd Boy's playing Stephen is oh, amazing, isn't he? He's isn't such he? a good baddie. Yeah. Anyway, that's Coronation Street tonight. Back Locked to today, uh, we're going to be talking to Sally a lot more now. We're going to be talking about the menopause following breast cancer, which I know Brenda's very keen to talk about as well. And uh, your friend, Professor Hormone Specialist, is also joining us. Before we do any of that... Thank you, Laura. Yes, good luck with that. Now, uh, we've got a health special for you today. We're going to be talking about something that's rarely discussed, and that's dealing with the menopause following breast cancer. Now, it's a conversation that I know Sally is very keen to have. Um, and when you were... Uh, you know, you were diagnosed with breast cancer and we've talked about breast cancer with you before. You've been very open about it. But at what point did you think, well, now I'm struggling with the menopause, how much is that linked to breast cancer? What, what made you think something's not right? Um, well, I was 46 when I got breast cancer, so I was probably nearly going through the menopause, but I was still quite young, so um, I wasn't really expecting it and suddenly... I just remember walking into work one day and thinking, oh, my gosh, I'm really nervous. I feel really anxious. If anybody talks to me, I just want to cry. It just it kind of overwhelmed me a little bit. But then um, I met Anise at the school gate. So this is been... the hormone specialist friend who's going to come on in, in a bit, actually. But... And, and we were really good friends because our um, daughters were in the same class. And um, she'd been amazing because during my breast cancer, um, she'd kind of guided me through what was going to happen to me and, and explain things to me because I didn't know what was going on at that age. How long did it take you to realise that those... That, to ask someone, like, these symptoms... I'm, I'm struggling. But what is it? Like, when, at what point did you go, I need help because it's menopause? Or did you think it was due to the cancer and the chemo? And Well, that's really interesting because I, I actually had no idea I was going through... I mean, I knew I was going through the menopause, mm. but when I got those symptoms of feeling anxious and mm. couldn't go... I didn't realise that they were linked. was. Yeah. They were linked. I just thought, oh, why am I feeling like this? But... Um, but I, I have to say, I did come through it. I mean, every woman is completely different, and I did come through it relatively quickly. I mean, probably I had six months or three months, you know, between three and six months of feeling like that, and I did come through it. And I think, for me, one of the things that really helped me, well, was talking to Anise, but also um, exercise, because I just suddenly thought, I, I really need to do this for my own mental health, or else, you know, I... I so, going to the gym, and I know that's really boring and not everybody yeah, wants really to is. do it. Yeah, it really is. But, you know... <laughs> <laughs> just thought I thought it couldn't get worse. <laughs> <laughs> but for me, it, it, it helped me. I, it made me feel a little bit more confident. And then, and then I, I, I felt I got through it. 
And um... it's interesting you saying about going to work, you know, you're a confident person, you've been at Corrie for years, know your staff, people probably look up to you. Suddenly you're feeling anxious, suddenly you're going, can I remember these lines? And so many women will identify that. Yeah. We've talked about it on here how women in really successful careers have given up their job because they couldn't cope, mm -hmm. thinking there was something wrong with mm. them and I'm not doing my job anymore, properly anymore. Yeah. And that's a huge problem for a lot of women. Yeah, oh, absolutely. But I, I think there's a wider conversation to be had about menopause and the fact that, you know, everybody says, oh, you know, I take HRT, so I'm, I'm absolutely fine. And, um, you know, I can't take HRT, so I have to find other ways. Same as Brenda. Mm -hmm. Same yeah. as yeah. Brenda. Yeah. And, um, you know, the, there is a conversation that HRT doesn't work for everybody. A, a, apparently 46% of women who take HRT still suffer with, you know, all the all the things that come with um, menopause. So I do think it's a really interesting conversation of, you know, one size doesn't fit all and we need to be talking about about other ways of coping with, mm. with the menopause. Well, I think, Brenda, you said as well, we don't often... We've talked a lot about menopause on here, obviously, yeah. but we haven't talked about... Menopause, menopause following breast yeah, cancer, like yeah. early menopause, which well, is what Well, yeah, I was you 45 had. when I was diagnosed with my stage 3 breast cancer and then I had chemotherapy. And after the first um, bout of chemotherapy, uh, I had no periods after that. And it, I, I, I remember keep thinking to myself, oh, gosh, the because I suffered from period pains, I thought it would be nice to not have a period anymore. And then when it went and, obviously, I got the hot flushes with that, instantly and it's just progressed and got worse and worse and the the i didn't as much as you get told that when you go for chemotherapy you get told so many different things so mm. it didn't really go in until there was no i was i was in the early menopause phase and it it kind of freaked me out just a little well, bit well listen it 